Welcome back. In this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to answer questions from IXL's R.10 Geometry module. I'm going to go through questions at all levels up to a SMART score of 100. Linked in the description below is a set of all the problems we're going to look at in this video so you can solve along with me. Let's get started. For this first one, we're asked to solve the right triangle, meaning we're going to find all the missing angles and all the missing sides. We are given angle T, which is 60 degrees, and the hypotenuse, which is 18. Based on the given angle, we know that angle R must be 30 degrees. That makes this a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. On the right side here, I included a reference figure for the 30, 60, 90 triangle. The hypotenuse is twice the shorter leg, which itself is opposite the 30 degree angle. That means that ST will be half of 18, which is 9. The longer leg, SR, will be the shorter leg times the square root of 3. So that's 9 square roots of 3. And that's it for this triangle. In this next one, we are again solving the triangle. We are given angle S, which is 30 degrees. That means that angle T must be 60 degrees. We have the hypotenuse, which will be twice the shorter leg. The shorter leg is going to be across from the 30 degree angle, so that will be segment RT. Half of the hypotenuse will be 8 square roots of 41. The longer leg across from the 60 degree angle will be the shorter leg times the square root of 3. Here we'll multiply 8 square roots of 41 times the square root of 3. We can multiply the radicands 41 and 3. That gives 8 square roots of 123. In this third example, we're given angle B, 45 degrees, and right away I know this triangle is isosceles. It is also referred to as a 45-45-90 special right triangle. The other acute angle D is 45 degrees, and opposite these two congruent angles, I will have two congruent sides. That makes the other leg, BC, the square root of 33. The hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle is the leg times the square root of 2. Again, I can multiply the radicands here. That'll be 33 times 2, or the square root of 66. This next one is also an isosceles right triangle. I'm given angle Q, which is 45 degrees. And I'll go ahead and fill in angle R, which will also be 45 degrees. This time, I'm given the hypotenuse, which is the length of the leg, times the square root of 2. I'll set up a little equation here to solve for the leg. I've got x times the square root of 2 equals 12 times the square root of 6. I'll divide both sides of the equation by the square root of 2. I can divide the radicands here. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so simplified I will have 12 square roots of 3. Since the triangle is isosceles, both legs will have the same measurement. In this next one, I am not given any angles, but I am given the two legs of the triangle. I see that they are congruent. They're both 2. That means that I'm looking at an isosceles right triangle, which means that angles x and W are congruent. These must be 45 degree angles. The only thing that's left to find here is the hypotenuse. From my reference guide, I see that the hypotenuse of a 45-45-90 right triangle is the leg times the square root of 2. Since the length of the leg is 2, the hypotenuse, Wx, will be 2 times the square root of 2. I can see that this next example is a bit different, because IXL is no longer asking for the exact rationalized answer. Instead, I'm told to round a decimal answer to the nearest tenth. This is not a special right triangle. I'm given angle G 50 degrees, meaning angle H must be 40 degrees. To solve for the hypotenuse GH, I can use a couple of different approaches. I'll go with the cosine function this time. To set it up, I have cosine of 50 degrees equals 5 over the hypotenuse, which we'll call x. To solve, I'll multiply both sides of the equation by x and divide both sides by the cosine of 50 degrees. I get approximately 7.8. I still need to solve for hi, which is opposite the 50 degree angle. This time, I'll go with the tangent function so that I don't have to use the rounded answer from the hypotenuse. That would lead to a less precise answer. To set it up, I have tangent of 50 degrees equals x, the missing side, over 5. To solve, I multiply both sides of the equation by 5. I get about 6.0, and that's rounded to the nearest tenth. This next one is another non-special right triangle. We'll have approximate decimal answers here. We are given angle S, which is 44 degrees. That means angle R will be 46 degrees. I'm also given the hypotenuse, which is 10. To solve for the base, st, I'll use cosine. I'll set this up as cosine of 44 degrees equals x over 10. To solve, I'll multiply both sides of the equation by 10. This gives approximately 7.2. To solve for the height, rt, I'll go with sine. I'll set it up as sine of 44 degrees equals x over 10. To solve, just multiply both sides of the equation by 10. This gives approximately 6.9. Last example. This time, I'm given two legs, but neither of the acute angles. Since I'm solving for angles here, I'll need to use inverse functions. Let's start with angle u. I'll be able to use inverse tangent here. I'll set this up as tangent of angle u equals 7 over 
6, so u will be inverse tangent of 7 over 4.6. That's approximately 56.7 degrees. Now let's go for angle v. I can use inverse tangent here as well. I can set this up as tangent of angle v equals 4.6 over 7. So v will be inverse tangent of 4.6 over 7. That's approximately 33.3 degrees. Now, once I knew one of the acute angles, I could have just subtracted the two known angles from 180 to solve here. I didn't actually have to use a trig function for that final angle. To find the hypotenuse, you have lots of options. You could use a trig function or the Pythagorean theorem. Let's use the latter. I've got 4.6 squared plus 7 squared equals x squared. That will be 70.16 equals x squared. Using Desmos for that, I have about 8.4 for the hypotenuse.